What's up everyone and welcome back to Movie Race. Like my favorite Downton Abbey character says, life is a game where the player must appear ridiculous. And hey, despite the really regal, elegant, and fancy schmancy stuff that goes on in that series, there are bound to be a few laughs here and there. Here are Downton Abbey Season 2 bloopers that are even better than the show. The Grantham Estate is huge, beautiful, and a sight to behold indeed. And as we learn at Season 1, it is at stake. Now, although Mary is very troubling and ironically very alive, love life was fun. <coughs> Special mention to you, Mr. Pumuk. Season 2 has definitely got me curling my toes in my seat. The bar was definitely set very high because of the first season, and yet the second one didn't disappoint. Aired from September of 2011 to November of 2011, the show spanned 8 episodes and one extra special Christmas one, which was my favorite really. It ultimately increased viewership for the Crawleys and their side staff's story and eventually won so many awards. Downton Abbey 2 focused more on the years of the war, specifically the last two, and eventually transitioning into the first year of peace. It really paved the way for new ideologies that birthed feminist movements, Marxism, and the death of aristocracy for Britain. It showed the happenings of the war and how it consequently affected the people after. This goes after saying that the usual Downton Abbey drama, Forbidden Love, and so many of Maggie Smith's iconic lines were still thrown in the mix, and ma'am, we are seated! So, we ended the first season with a glimpse of the Crawley family in the midst of the war. It showed so much passion, tears, blood, and even one forced wedding. And although season 2 was filled with a whole lot of all of the things I just mentioned, and yet what was behind the camera was far from it. Wounded Soldier In this scene specifically, Dan Stevens, who plays Matthew Crawley, was super excited to play a hero role. But after the scene was, we see that he's had a blast, <laughs> pun intended, because he got to choose the wounded soldier he was supposed to carry, and he chose the small smallest, lightest man he could find, which was then retorted with an, I'd had no breakfast. I guess the heroes behind the camera aren't much of a Superman after all. Yeah. Yeah. The smallest, lightest yeah, man lightest they one. could find. <laughs> <laughs> I've had no breakfast. <laughs> So many men were hired to make this war scene as eerie and realistic as possible and yet, when the cameras weren't rolling, Dan surely had a way to smash that like button, oh, I mean, charm the camera. Driving During the onslaught of the war, the ladies sure stepped up their game. Admittedly, one of my very favorite parts of the series because girl power, I mean Lady Sybil becoming a nurse and Lady Mary helping out was really cool and all, but I personally liked how the unassuming Lady Edith chose to learn how to drive, a bold move for a lady of her status during her time. I think that was over. While adjusting to the new now, here's the catch. Lady Edith, played by Laura Carmichael, and the rest of the cast weren't really driving around town in one of those cool, very high cars because they were actually being pulled by a truck. The producers just couldn't risk driving these very old cars around, so they just went with the most practical choice, which was to pull them with a truck. Although not a very fun fact, the blooper looks pretty neat. Knowing how a few of these scenes actually turned out, production is definitely a 10 out of 10. Oh, Biscuits Sarah O'Brien was hardly anyone's favorite character on the show, and apart from being a bitter, scheming accomplice to Thomas, she really had no other redemptive factor apart from being kind of soft towards Lady Grantham, but Shoban Finneran? Definitely another story. In this little blooper, we see a scene being shot of Thomas in the downstairs kitchen when someone decides to roam around with a little treat, followed by a few shame on yous from Robert James Collier, who plays Thomas. Oh, Biscuits indeed. Uh, shame on you. Shame on you. Take three. Now thing, although the downstairs cast seems to have created this sort of gloomy feel and vibe, they're actually quite fun to be around. Like this little snippet of them mouthing what seems to be vocalization, I honestly don't know, but you tell me, they all just look so cute. Finger Guns The very serious Miss O'Brien doing finger guns? Cop? Pun intended. A laugh as she makes the set light up with her silly antics. I mean, get a grip, woman. People are trying to shoot. Not 
To add to all of this hype for the downstairs cast, you'd be glad to know that everyone's favorite assistant cook, aka Daisy, played by Sophie McShira, actually carried all those heavy buckets, pots, and pans like a real pro, saying that she even grew some bruises and gotten marks on her hand because of it. I mean, honestly, I just thought all those heavy buckets and hot pans were for show, but I guess the DA cast and producers were really into every scene in there. Water bottle. Speaking of dedication, in 2014, there was a great debacle on the set about a supposedly harmless water bottle. Yep, you heard that right. Downton Abbey is known for its accuracy, set, and design, and yet, people are still people, and water bottles weren't so much of a thing during the 1920s as an iPhone with three cameras. A fan using Twitter tweeted, and I quote, Obviously, the Crawley family invented the water bottle, and that's how they were able to support the estate. In what is one of many historical bloopers, the history of the water bottle remains timeless. The food. Now, if you've actually watched the film, like I assumed you have, because why else would you be watching this in the first place? You know how absolutely salivating all of the food is. Makes you just want to hire a Mrs. Patmore for yourself, huh? The thing about all that food and having to do lots and lots of takes is that it's just not very realistic. And so, yes, they did prepare food before scenes, but as Sophie McShera and Leslie Nicole, Daisy and Mrs. Patmore respectively, have revealed some of these meals are actually frozen which on some occasions smelled very awful. Sophie says that in one scene they had to do lobster and although it looked perfect it definitely didn't smell perfect. Yeah that's and a difference. lot more like gross cuts of meat you know yeah, because yeah, we've yeah. gotten obviously there's no that's right that she has a money. big moan about something so much so that the production decided to call it lobster gate. No that's a fantasy ruined. Excitement. Now it's not every day you see historical films and casts run or something like that. But on a personal note, I actually quite enjoyed watching this blooper of the actors running excitedly towards a walking Matthew. This scene itself was pretty okay, but to see the cast smiling and frolicking about in their old-fashioned clothes and gowns was a pretty cool sight. And hey, all of this credit belongs to the cameraman who has absolutely dedicated himself to the craft. Just look at him with that robot-looking wrapping machine and running with the cast as fast as he can. Now that is a legend right there. To add to that scene is this really funny shot of Hugh Bonneville as Lord Grantham, mockingly saying, it's a miracle, sounding like a ghost while raising his hands a bit. And I checked, this wasn't actually in the episode, but it's downright hilarious. It's a miracle. If this is how actors rehearse some of their scenes, then I am all in for it. The Evil One. Now, admittedly, I think this one was a bit early into Downton Abbey 3, but honestly, I just wanted to add Maggie Smith in here somewhere because, well, because. In this particular blooper, Robert James explains that Maggie went out of her car to just tell him that there he is, the evil one, and started walking towards Robert, then proceeds to tell him, why are you so bad? But hey, we, like Robert, should just hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. Of course, that actor fangirling about the silly encounter and if anything, that was actually one hell of a compliment, don't you think? There he is, the evil one. I walked straight over to me and I'm like, oh my god, in my head. As a bonus clip, here's a very, um, I'm not sure how to explain it yet, but let's stick to fun creation by Robert James himself entitled Downton Wars Part 1 and 2. It's 20 minutes of the Downton cast playing around on set with Brendan Coyle in a cap, some silly swords, and him saying, cheese. Cheese. All of it is fun and games, but this was actually a short clip for charity. Now, Downton Abbey has grown into the powerhouse that it is today, and we're all really excited for this new installment that like the new era and even more. The Crawley family isn't done with us, and so are we. See you in the next video.